last chapter of a sea drama which has thrilled the world unfolds as the gallant freighter Flying Enterprise, still in tow, is battered by pounding seas. The tug turmoil was winning the fight to safety when the tow line snapped and the Enterprise was once again adrift. Meanwhile, Falmouth, not knowing of the broken tow line, waited day and night to greet the heroic skipper and his ship. Only 40 miles from shore, the turmoil hovered in close attendance, hoping to get a fresh line on the ship, which could be seen in the light of flares. But little did the tug's crew realize that this was the last night afloat of the crippled American freighter. Next day, the position was so grave that a naval helicopter attempted unsuccessfully, through bad visibility, to rescue the two men by lifeline. The last moments had come for the Enterprise as she settled down even lower in the cruel Atlantic swell. The turmoil and the faithful watchdog destroyer Willard Keith closed in, for somehow those two men still on board had to be rescued. Then came a series of graphic radio messages. Land's end to the destroyer Willard Keith. Taking full distress action. We are taking full distress action. Two moments later, a message from the Willard Keith. And this is a Keith, uh, Roger. There are plenty of ships standing by to take Captain Carlson and Mr. Dancy off. We can see them both standing on the Flying Enterprise now. Over. At that moment, Captain Carlson and the gallant mate Dancy were walking along the funnel, leaving the Flying Enterprise for the last time. message from the Willard Keith told the glad news that the turmoil had picked both men up from the sea. Now this is the Willard Keith. Uh, turmoil has rescued Captain Carlson and Mr. Dancy. Both safely aboard. Over. Again, the destroyer broke the tense silence to tell the world that Flying Enterprise was now 90% underwater. The end was not far off. Uh, Land's End, this is the Willard Keith. Uh, Flying Enterprise is now on her side about 90% underwater with waves breaking over. She's still uh, partly afloat, though, over. By now, the sinking ship lay on her side, and this picture was taken only 10 seconds before the final plunge. Back in Falmouth, it was Carlson's day as enormous crowds waited for turmoil in her brave company of men. And a proud father and mother from Denmark, their anxiety forgotten, eagerly awaited their son. Sadly, the turmoil came into port, as if regretting that Enterprise was not there too. And then the little band of heroes, led by Captain Carlson, walked to the reception days to face another storm, the storm of welcome and congratulation which was about to surge over them. 
Mayor of Falmouth, Councillor Morris, echoed the sentiments of the whole world. It has fallen to the lot of this ancient seaport to welcome into it on their return from the hazards and perils of the sea this company of very brave men. Then Captain Parker of the turmoil spoke of a difficult job as being merely routine. Of course, as you are aware, this is to us just an ordinary job. And Ken Dancy, who joined the skipper. Well, I'm uh, afraid I'm really too overwhelmed to say very much, but uh, I must uh, express my great admiration for Captain Carson. I knew you all behind me, and I just cannot find words enough to express my gratitude to all of you. I knew Captain Parker and his crew lived up to the tradition of an old seafaring nation and did, I believe, what was possible to save the flying enterprise. I deeply regret that I was not in a position to bring it back with me, but the odds were too heavy against us. Now the shy captain faced his greatest ordeal, a press interview. What was it like living at 80 degrees? It's uh, rather lonesome until uh, Mr. Dancy came aboard. Then things took a little more pleasant look, and uh, it was a great comfort to have him aboard. How did you get your food and your drink, and how did you sleep? Uh, by courtesy of uh, Commander O'Brien of the American destroyer, Villa Keith, uh, and other ships, uh, we managed to live quite comfortable. They shot lines, the containers of food over to us every day, and uh, we uh, were quite comfortable sleeping also. I wonder if you'd like to describe the conditions and how you were finding the really flying enterprise. <laughs> Decided that we would walk out on the smokestack, which we did, and uh, <laughs> with our life jackets on, we jumped from the smokestack into the sea and swam toward the uh, uh, tugboat turmoil where the crew was ready to pick us up. And uh, in less than nine minutes, we were brought in the uh, turmoil where we were handed some warm tea and rum, some warm clothes, and then we had a very welcome rest. And what board. are you going to do now? I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. And today, Captain Carlson and Kenneth Dancy are heroes to the crowds of ordinary people who follow their plight hour by hour. Flying Enterprise is no more, but her name lives on, linked forever with that of her captain, Kurt Carlson, whose calm and dogged courage has mirrored the true chivalry of the sea. <laughs>